Today's video is the first in a series that will transform you from a very beginner cold process soap maker to an absolute expert in the field, giving you a great new hobby or business along the way. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Today's video is a very, very basic and foundational video. And I wanna give you just the bare bones basics of cold process soap making. Obviously, we need to start right here at what exactly does someone mean when they say cold process soap making? This term refers to a person generally or usually by hand mixing together various oils and a chemical, which we'll dive into both of those in just a few minutes, mixing them together until they have a chemical reaction. Why do we love chemical reactions? That's actually a great question. We love chemical reactions because they result in a new substance being formed. The chemical makeup of all of the ingredients is permanently changed, resulting in something new with a new chemical makeup. Sorry, hopefully my science teacher wasn't <laughs> showing too much, but and in our case, the new substance being formed is a wonderful lathery handmade bar of soap. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the ingredients that I mentioned before. When you start making cold processed soap, you will follow recipes. That's right. I know it's interesting to hear about recipes in a way that's not referring to food, but you use a search engine like Google or find a blog that you love or look up videos of recipes on YouTube. There are tons of options. There are also a lot of books that you can check out that are soap making recipe books at local libraries or used somewhere, you know, like on Amazon. So when you make soap, you follow a recipe and that recipe will have two categories of ingredients. The first one is going to be oils. And when I say oils, I mean something like olive oil or canola oil, avocado oil, coconut. There are tons, I mean tons of oils that you can use in soap making. And what's great about it is that each oil brings its own individual and unique characteristic to the bar of soap. Now I'm going to give you some basic ones that you might see more often and explain those to you. But just so you know, as we get further into this series, we might upgrade some of these more basic oils for and ingredients for something that's a little bit more unique and complex. So just because I mention it here doesn't mean that's the end all be all. There are tons, as you'll see, tons of different options. When you decide to make cold process soap, you can actually just use one oil. It's really only recommended if you're just using one single oil to just use olive oil. But if you're looking for more than just olive oil, you're going to be using some sort of blend. Again, we're going to cover formulation a little bit later in this series. Olive oil is used in soap to harden the bar, give it like that, you know, bar soap texture, of course, and it also helps it last longer. Coconut oil, which comes in several different forms, but just the general coconut oil is used to add a moisturizing, uh, property to your final bar. Then of course there is our old buddy castor oil. Castor oil has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years all over the um, like health and beauty space. So it's no surprise to us that we find it here in soap making. It is used to give your bar just a really nice lather alongside of the other added benefits of using it. Palm oil is used very frequently in soap making, but here's a little caveat for you. If you do plan on using palm oil, just know that um, it does add a, um, a little layer of controversy because it can be sourced. Um, it can be sourced and not 
a good way right now of course that is just a small handful of the oils that can be used in soaping and what they bring to your bar again we're going to cover more a little bit later on but just for now keep those in the back of your mind talked about how soap making ingredients come in two categories our first category was oils now we are moving on to the second category which is the usually referred to as the liquids stage. And yes, if you are waiting for me to talk about sodium hydroxide lye, it's coming in this section right now. Before we get to that mythical, is it a monster? Is it a unicorn? Before we get to that mythical area, I just wanted to let you know, because I'm sure some of you are writing all of this down in a notebook, which I'm so glad to see. This series, I have put so much thought research and effort into making it as comprehensive as possible so what i decided to do was make a printable pdf workbook and guide that goes along with each video so you don't have to worry about writing it down all you have to do is download it and print it out now this workbook is a very comprehensive guide that includes all of the things that we go over here as well as some special sections that are strictly inside that workbook so if you are interested the link is in the top of the description box below this series was a really big undertaking and i'm so glad that i did it um, but uh, it does, you know, it also means a lot that you believe in my work so much that you chose to pay for a download that goes along with it. So thanks again in advance if you decide to do that. All right, back to the value of the video and getting into our liquids phase. Within your liquids phase, you are going to have a combination of things, okay? Again, this is staying very, very basic. Generally, when making cold process soap, especially in the beginning, you'll use a liquid, typically a distilled water. You'll mix it with some sodium hydroxide lye flakes. Once they combine, then you'll mix them in with your soap. But let's talk about both of these for a second. Though typically a beginner recipe will just include distilled water, um, just as a quick note for the future, you can mix in all kinds of liquids as long as they're like room temperature or colder. You never wanna put in a hot liquid um, because the temperature naturally increases when you mix the lye in with that liquid and you don't wanna have essentially like an explosion on your hands. So make sure that your liquids are always room temperature or colder. A lot of people also like to use different milks. It's really cool. You can add essentially whatever type of liquid you want. Just make sure that you're keeping in mind that the type of liquid that you use and the color of the type of liquid that you use will change your final bar. On to this mythical creature, sodium hydroxide lye. The thing that stopped me from making cold process soap at the beginning of my journey. Now, I'm here to tell you, I used to be really scared of using lye. Every video that I saw was like, oh, lye is so dangerous and you know, it's, it's terrible and all of these things, right? There's so many dangers that are associated with it and they are all true. If you are not following safety precautions and best practices, then yes, it is very dangerous. You're gonna hurt yourself or someone else. So keep that in mind. If you are doing best practices and you are being safe, there is nothing wrong with it and you're going to be just fine. Now, what exactly is sodium hydroxide lye? Lye is a chemical and it comes in a jar, in a like flake, a solid flake form. It kind of looks like if you've ever um, made candles and used wax flakes, that's kind of what it looks like, though it is very, very different. Essentially, what you do is you put that sodium hydroxide lye into your liquid that we discussed earlier in this category and wait for the reaction to occur. Now, when this happens, you're not going to physically see anything happening, but you'll notice that the temperature gets really, really hot. Usually, my mixtures get between 150 to 178 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the temperatures of everything comes down, it's time to combine and move on to the next step in the process. 
Now, I'm gonna take this a moment just to go over some live safety, and this is something that should be taken extremely seriously. First things first, always make sure that you are mixing lye and soap making in a well-ventilated area, preferably fan, open window, large space, away from children and pets. Again, this will cause burns, whether they are internal or from smelling it, um, significantly or external because you accidentally splashed it on yourself. So always make sure you're soaping in a well ventilated area. Long sleeves, you need gloves, you need goggles. I like to wear a face mask and I also always wear socks. Now you'll never find me in like shorts anyway, but if you are a shorts person, then make sure you're wearing pants. Don't forget to cover your toes, okay? Because a splash is a splash and it can happen anywhere. And you know, if gravity is acting on it, it's gonna fall right to the ground. So just make sure you don't forget to cover those toes. And most importantly, when you're working with lye or soaping in general, you always want to make sure that you are staying calm and taking your time. Sometimes you might think, oh no, I need to soak right now or it's going to be ruined. And that's usually the opposite of the case, okay? So take your time, really think through what you're going to do before you even start. So you're nice, calm, you know exactly what you're doing when the time comes. All right, once you combine everything, you've added your fragrance oil, you've colored whatever you're going to color, all that's left to do is pour it into the mold and wait. <laughs> Generally, you do have to wait until the next day to unmold it. There are some cases where it may be done earlier or it may take a longer time to re-solidify. Just make sure you're not taking it out of the mold too soon because that's going to ruin the entire process that you just finished. And that's where we're going to stop our soap making basics for today, okay? What I'm going to do is put some videos here on the screen that you can watch in the meantime while you're waiting for our next video. If you feel like you might be a little bit more advanced, you might want to skip ahead to this old video on my channel here, which is different soaps that I've made using the cold process method and how they fail. If you are newer in your journey, but you know that you want to make this into a business, you might want to watch this one here, how to start your cold process soap business for $100. Both are very valuable and they'll both give you a lot of great information no matter what section of the journey you yourself are on. Don't forget to subscribe because coming up in video number two for this series of cold process soap making is all of the things that you will actually need to get started, including ingredients, equipment, um, common things that you might see people on social media using, but you probably don't need at this stage. Tons of value coming in that next video. I hope to see you there. Bye.